liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to... So you've had dreams of becoming an astronaut. You want to work with astronauts and bridge the gap between long-term human space travel and the medical complications that arise. You like the idea of working in the harshest and most remote environments, applying medicine at the actual frontier of human exploration. Let's debunk the myths and public perceptions and give it to you straight. This is the reality of aerospace medicine. Student Dr. Dan, third year medical student, medschoolstress.com. Welcome to my first and probably only installment of So You Want to Be. In this series, stolen from Med School Insiders, we highlight a specific specialty in medicine and help you decide if it's a good fit for you. All right, first I gotta give a quick shout out to Dr. Duvall and the Med School Insiders channel. They are a fantastic channel who makes these great resources of videos called So You Want to Be that detail different specialties. So if you wanna check out some really good content by them, I recommend checking out them. But the reason I'm making this video for aerospace medicine is because it is a very niche field and one I'm highly considering going into. And I thought I would make my own video about it because I'm not sure if Med School Insiders would ever cover it. It would probably be a while and some of you might want this information now. So no hard feelings or anything, Dr. Jabal, if you're watching this. I just thought it would be a good idea to share what it means to be an aerospace medicine physician. So let's get started. All right, first let's go over what is aerospace medicine, like a general overview. Now the textbook definition of aerospace medicine is that it concerns the determination and maintenance of the health, safety, and performance of all people involved with air and space travel. And some of these conditions are of course drastically different compared to here on ground level Earth. Microgravity, radiation exposure, G-forces, emergency ejection injuries, hypoxic conditions, crazy changes in pressure. All of these conditions are of concern to a space medicine physician. All right, now let's cover how to become a space medicine physician because that's probably what most of you are interested in. Now, it's not as complicated as it sounds, although it does require a lot of education and a lot of steps, similar to like any other fellowship or specialty in medicine that you might be considering. So first off, you gotta graduate high school usually finish an undergrad degree unless you go straight into like a six-year med program. But for me personally, I went to university for four years and now I'm in medical school for another four years. Now, once you finish medical school, there are a few options that are available to you that I'll cover. And there's basically two main routes to go through if you want to specialize in aerospace medicine. One is to do a residency in internal medicine or emergency medicine or family medicine you can honestly do a residency in any specialty, it doesn't really matter. They just want highly motivated applicants that show interest in aerospace medicine. So you could even do a psychiatry residency and then apply for the aerospace medicine fellowship. So basically you either complete a three or four year residency, become board certified in that residency, and then apply for the two year fellowship. Now the second option, and one that I would like to do, is to immediately go into a combined residency program. And currently the only one that I know of in the country is the one at UTMB, University of Texas Medical School branch in Galveston. It's a four year combined internal medicine and aerospace medicine program. And you end up being board certified in both of those specialties. So the first two years are internal medicine. And then the next two years are like the normal fellowship of aerospace medicine. Now the fellowship is super awesome. I actually was able to talk with one of the residents there now that's in the combined program. And he's in his second year right now, so he's still in internal medicine, but he was telling me in the fellowship, you have so many awesome opportunities to rotate at NASA, to work with flight surgeons, and to even do a one month or two month period in Antarctica to like simulate those type of extreme conditions that you might be you know, taking care of astronauts in and whatnot. So it's a super exciting and definitely very adventurous opportunity in my opinion. So this combined program is definitely for people who 100% know they want to go into aerospace medicine because you're only doing two years of internal medicine and in a normal internal medicine residency, you usually do three years. So even though you end up being board certified in internal medicine, you maybe lack that one year of residency experience you can still become a hospitalist, but for the most part, people that are going through this combined program will end up becoming aerospace medicine physicians uh, because they know for sure that that's what they want to do. Now, the second option is a little bit more flexible. The one that I mentioned where you first do a residency in another specialty and then apply for the aerospace medicine fellowship. Because if you don't like aerospace medicine in the end, then you can always go back to that other specialty and just forget about aerospace medicine. 
or you can do the vice versa and kind of hop between the two like you can be a part-time family medicine physician and then um, for your main role you can be taking care of astronauts or be a flight surgeon. Now to my knowledge there are currently five accredited fellowship programs in the United States. All right, and I got to get my iPad here because sometimes I forget what those um, other two programs are but the first program um, is a military program. I think there's actually a couple military programs and the first one is uh, through the Air Force at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Um, it's in Ohio. The second one is the Navy program the Pensacola Naval Air Station in Florida. And then, oh, actually the third one, it's still um, involved with the military and it's the army program at Fort Rucker. Um, now the two civilian programs, and for me personally, since I'm not in the military or have an HSP um, scholarship, like the scholarship that gets you free tuition to medical school, but then you have to serve, I'm considering, well, I am going through the civilian program um, and the two civilian programs right now are the one I mentioned at the University of Texas Medical School branch in Galveston. And that one has the fellowship program and the combined program. So you can apply to either depending on where you are in your training to become a doctor. And then the second one is at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And the Mayo Clinic, I believe, is just the fellowship right now. They don't offer any sort of combined program. Now, I have heard rumors that more medical schools are gonna be offering aerospace medicine either as a fellowship or as a combined program because space travel is growing overall. There's so much news happening and even more regular civilians are starting to go on these missions kind of in lower Earth orbit and maybe even to the ISS. So there's definitely gonna be a growing need for aerospace medicine physicians and that might reflect an increase in more residency positions for this specialty as well. All right, now in a similar fashion that Med School Insiders does these videos, I'm gonna cover what you'll love about this specialty and what you'll dislike about this specialty. So let's start off with some positive news and cover what you'll like about aerospace medicine. Basically, practicing medicine at the forefront of human exploration is nothing but extraordinary. Every day will be different depending on where you're stationed and what your responsibilities are, but it's definitely different from being in a hospital or clinic all day long, although the same skills still apply. You could be doing everything from annual flight physicals, to monitoring spacewalk sessions, to even joining some of the pilots or astronauts on their test flights. From my research, the weekly hours can vary, but they're usually probably between 40 or 70 hours a week, and this depends on if there's a really critical mission day versus a more relaxed week where you're just kind of overseeing training operations or just doing annual flight physicals. But generally, I think that the hours are probably a little bit better than other specialties, like if you're comparing to a very intense surgical specialty or maybe even some hospitalist hours as well. Although my information is a little bit limited because I haven't been able to actually talk to too many NASA flight surgeons or aerospace medicine physicians. So, and, and honestly, all their roles are so different that it's kind of hard to gauge like how many hours per week you're working. Um, but just from context and from what I've read online through my own research, I do believe it's probably around 40 to 70 hours a week. All right, now moving on to what you'll dislike about aerospace medicine. As with any field of medicine, life-threatening conditions and death are a part of the job. Astronaut training and flying can be intense and dangerous, and dealing with accidents can be really tough. It can also be really difficult to approach and tell a highly motivated individual that a condition they developed or have will prevent them from pursuing the career that they want to. Like if someone wants to become an astronaut or a pilot, but they have poor vision or they have some sort of heart condition that will prevent them from pursuing that field, you have to be the one as a physician to tell them that. Now there can also be a good amount of travel involved with this specialty, depending on where mission training occurs or where the actual capsule lands. So you can be working in some pretty remote or harsh conditions. And I mean, if you're adventurous, this is actually a positive, but if you don't like this type of work environment, then it'll probably be a negative for you. Man, now that I think about it, there's a lot more positives than negatives with aerospace medicine. Although I'm probably a little biased. Okay, wrapping this all up, should you become a space medicine physician? If you have an adventurous mind, are dedicated to science, you love space, and you don't really see yourself working in a hospital setting for the rest of your life, then aerospace medicine can be a fantastic specialty to pursue. As space travel opens up to the general public and more private industries like SpaceX continue to grow, 
the need for aerospace medicine physicians will grow as well. Now could be a perfect opportunity to pursue this amazing field of medicine. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was super fun to make, and I'm excited to see what the future of space medicine holds. I'm excited to see if I can do some away rotations and clerkships with NASA that I plan to pursue during my third and fourth year. As you all know who are watchers of this channel, I am currently in a medical school leave of absence, but this leave of absence has actually provided me with so many opportunities that I can pursue when I come back to medical school, and I'll share that all with you guys in future videos. But continue to stick along for the journey. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Stay strong and healthy, my Nakama. And as always, Dr. Bayo.